So, my childhood. My childhood happened um, growing up was my dad actually almost never really expressed any kind of physical emotions. And by that, I mean he literally, I don't recall ever hugging him or him ever hugging me. My father was extremely distant. I mean, he said that I love you occasionally, but other than that, my adoptive father never said I love you. Um, <clears throat> when I was growing up, my biological father was abusive, though. Um, and I mean that quite literally. He was abusive. Uh, I have scars over my face, as well as my biological brother, uh, that I ended up being adopted into the family that I was adopted into with. Um, <clears throat> I have scars on my body, uh, but you know, I mean, besides that, I think my father and I, the most we have ever done on physically expressing any kind of emotion is shaking each other's hands. And that was it. I don't ever recall him ever hugging me. And it wasn't until I actually was in uh, Chicago last weekend drinking uh, with my brother and my sister-in-law, and we got to talking about that. And the conversation was as to whether or not we actually ever recall being hugged by our dad. Because our uh, sister, well, my brother's wife, uh, my sister-in-law, was just like, well, why does your dad never seem to hug me? You know, like, he, he just never seems to genuinely care about, like, hugging me. But, you know, I, I just don't understand it. And my brother Nate looked at me, and he's just like, do you ever recall dad hugging you? Because I can't seem to recall him ever hugging you. Hugging me, for that matter. I, and he's like, I honestly don't even think dad and I have shook, shook hands before. And the only time my dad and I ever shook hands is when I went into the Air Force. That was it. That was the only time that my dad had expressed any kind of emotion. Like any kind of physical emotion. And it's a very weird concept to have to say that you know to have to say I've never had any kind of physical emotion with or expression from my own father uh, especially adoptive especially an adoptive father in that matter uh, but we also know that my grandfather was a very distant person from my uh, adoptive father you know my adoptive father didn't want to be like that um, <clears throat> And when I was growing up, I didn't really have friends. Um, and the friends that I did have, uh, they never once tried to give me a hug or anything. Like I had to ask them for a hug if I was feeling really, really, really unbelievably down. And the only times that, that ever happened was when my best friend uh, moved away. And I think when I got a wrongful termination from the Air Force. Now my sister and some of my brothers, they were a bit more hands-on touching. And by that I mean like they would physically try to hug me. But with that, I didn't like being touched and so with me not liking being touched you know I'm just I've distanced myself from expressing any kind of physical emotion to people to where you know when it comes to uh, me and you know people hugging me I just don't like it I can't I can't stand being touched um, <clears throat> I think there, there's only been three times where my mother and I have hugged no I think there was only once because two times I don't really count because that's not really hugging there was only one time when my mother actually physically hugged me and that was uh, basically when you know my I mean it, it, it was during my BMT graduation. And that was it. 
Now, my brother Steven, I only recall him ever hugging me like twice. Now that I'm thinking about it. And that was when I was leaving for the military, like a few days before I left for the military, and then <clears throat> the day of my BMT graduation. And that was it. Now, his wife, his wife is very, uh, hands-on type person you know like she just generally loves giving people hugs I, I don't know why my brother Nate and I actually have never seen my brother Steven's wife upset except for maybe one time and that was it and you know it it is kind of weird to have that kind of uh, relationship you know, for me, I I had to find a way to express emotions, uh, and the most I could do was say that I love somebody. Because if I care about somebody, the most I've done is actually say that I love you. I've never. I mean, I have hugged. The only time that I remember actually hugging someone was one of my exes and that was at the beginning and end of all of our dates and we went on a total of 12 dates and we never once kissed or anything else with the exception of maybe kissing each other on the cheek every now and then but other than that I don't think I've actually ever hugged people that often or had any kind of physical emotions being drawn out. I also rarely cry. Um, and that's mainly due to having an extreme tolerance build, build up to where, because I didn't really know how to physically express emotions, I don't really ever cry. And it's kind of sad to, you know, I have to say, you know, I don't know how to express emotions because I don't. You know, I mean, I grew up without being hugged often. You know, I mean, I actually wasn't, I actually didn't really hug anyone up until I was about like 15 years old, I think. And the first time I hugged anybody was my sister. Yeah, it's kind of weird. 15 years of not hugging somebody and I'm like 21. I'm like about 21. And out of that nearly 21 years of living, I have hugged next to nothing I have friends that say oh you know we hug somebody like two or three times a day total um, and me I think the most I've hugged somebody out of the past almost six years that I've been hugging people now has been like 20 times total in my entire life so essentially I've been hugging people once a year one time once a year that's bad to say. Uh, and to have that kind of mindset is not a good thing because the issue is you're more susceptible to being depressed because the thing is you not expressing the kind of emotions that you physically need to um, in order to keep a healthy mindset. Um, but you know, I never once got hugged by my father. I think that there was only one time. No, oh, that was a handshake. Yeah, my father and I, my father and I only shook hands, and that was the day that I went into the military. And that was it. Furthermore, because of that, you know, I mean, I just genuinely don't like being touched. I've had some people who literally try to reach out to give me a hug, and for me, I'm like, no, don't, don't, uh, don't touch me. I hate motorcycles, uh, but you know, I I've legitimately told people not to touch me. You know, I mean, no, there was my ex's best friend that hugged me once. So counting everyone that's hugged me has been a total of like four people, and that's it. And I think that's total out of 
every person that I've hugged is four people. Because there's my sister, my mother, my ex and her best friend, and my brother and I side hugged. So I don't count that as a full hug. I don't even count that as a hug to be honest. But it's still the matter and impression that I never hugged people growing up and I don't really goes with the whole touching thing uh, in my retrospective opinion because I don't touch people I don't like being touched and I think that has to do with the fact that I never really got hugged or that you know I really was a non-option to hug people uh, you know my parents whenever my brothers and I fought we our parents said shake hand you're gonna shake hands you're gonna say we're brothers and we're friends, and that was it. No kind of emotions being actually shown. And I think that another thing is, guys don't really show emotions as well as women do. Um, <clears throat> it's not a good thing to say. It, it legitimately isn't. Um, but I think my issue is I never had to express emotions of any kind. And that was a bad thing for me. Because the issue was, I didn't know how to express emotions. You know, I didn't know how to do things um, that other people did. And I don't ever recall having a really solid foundation of a friendship. Somebody to where I would hug them. Especially sometimes with even no question. I, the closest friend that I recall having growing up was my best friend, Vincent. And he and I met when we were in the second grade we were friends all the way up until like the seventh grade and then he moved to a different state and then he and I ultimately stopped talking altogether and that was our biggest thing was we quit talking and people that know me you know like on a personal level that have known me for years uh, know that I don't like being touched but here it goes they don't like being touched my sister every now and then will do a little like boop on the nose but other than that there's no physical emotions that I express I don't hug people I don't give people handshakes I just don't like being touched by people I don't like touching people at all and there's a lot of reasons behind that um, I was diagnosed with uh, you know, I mean there are two th medical things that I'm going to basically express to you guys that I was revealed with revealed to um, and that was uh, basically um, severe general anxiety disorder so you know I mean basically I have panic attacks and whatnot um, if I'm worried about something or if I'm like super depressed or I get scared for some unknown reason uh, and then I have generalized social anxiety disorder, meaning I don't know how to express any kind of emotions to people. You know, you can talk to me as a one-on-one -on -one person um, and I will literally look at you and I will just look at you and talk to you. I won't express any emotions. I'm just going to have a blank face because I don't know how to express emotions because I legitimately don't. And, you know, I mean, having that type of thing is a very... Uh, very big downside to everything in life and oh my god huh. um, but having that is a serious matter um, and having social anxiety just having a generalized social anxiety disorder means that you're gonna be prone to a lot of issues um, I think the longest relationship that I've had was about like nearly two years and that was it uh, cigarette butt. Uh, cigarette butt. and pick up your cigarette butt you know for that it was kind of like it's kind of like I didn't really know how to express emotions my grandparents when I was growing up they were around every now and then but you know I don't I only recall hugging my gram I, no now speaking of the hugging thing again you know I, I, I remember 
hugging my grandmother a total of three times. And that was because I didn't like being touched, I didn't like expressing emotions, and I didn't like people knowing that about me. Excuse me. I think that the minute that, you know, I express any kind of emotions, I view myself as extremely weak. <coughs> Let me express something. I am an extremely prideful person. Um, so being that prideful, you know, I just don't view any reason to uh, be touching people in that matter. And for that very reason, I just, I have no reason to be touching people. You know, I, I just don't like being touched by people in general, in any case or scenario. And I think that's the biggest issue that people have is that people look at me and they look at me like I'm a, some freak or weirdo or something. And, you know, they look at me and they're just like, why do you not like being touched? You know, like, why is it that you are the way that you are? Why is it that you don't know how to express emotions like everybody else does? You know, like your, your mind isn't fully there. And I, you know, I mean, to me, it's like my mind is there. You know, I will touch people if I have to, but it's more or less of that I don't want to because I've shut myself off from people for so long that my mind is automatically in that mindset of, hey, don't touch this person because, you know, I'm going to freak out if I do. Um, <clears throat> and that also coexists with the uh, whole abuse thing um, and being physically abused by uh, my biological father and my biological brother is a serious thing. Um, I was also abandoned as a uh, infant, if you will. Um, and because I was abandoned, I have abandonment issues and I have trust issues. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't take that into consideration when it comes to me because, you know, I mean, people will abandon me for no apparent reason. And when it, that happens, I trust people less and less every single day. You know, I mean, there's a part of me that, you know, I've tried to keep locked away for years. Um, <clears throat> eventually, one person drew it out, and that was it. You know, that's all that they were able to do was draw it out for a very, very brief moment in time. And other than that, you know, like, I was able to put that away. And, you know, I mean, the thought of that type of side of me coming out again, I just don't like and that was mainly due to people touching me. And, you know, again, it's why I don't like being touched. It's why I can't tolerate being touched. It's why I can't tolerate being around people for too long. Um, <clears throat> when I was growing up, I was mainly in my room. As a matter of fact, I believe that I was always in my room, except for when I was in school. And I was homeschooled eventually, um, instead of being public schooled. Uh, and the public school that I went to, I went to because I had, uh, <clears throat> some learning disabilities um, that I've eventually gotten past um, but other than that you know I, I have this issue with being touched that you know not a lot of people consider in any capacity and so when people consider that you know they're just like oh well you know why do you not like being touched and it's because I just don't like being touched you know if you touch me I'm gonna freak out and I think again that has to go inside and go and exist with all my other issues um, being touched for me is like you're shooting me in the leg or you're trying to murder me or something um, because for me having being touched and physically abused by my own brother and biological father um, I, I can't stand being touched because of it and you know I mean you shouldn't have to say that you fear being touched by another person because of other people. You know, you shouldn't have to say, oh, well, you know, I'm afraid to be touched by this person because, you know, of what happened with my brother. You know, I'm afraid to be touched by this person because of what happened because of my biological father. You know, I, I'm afraid to be touched by this person because I just don't like being touched. You know, like in my retrospective opinion, um, as well as, you know, a therapist that I'm seeing, uh, I shouldn't have some of the issues that I have uh, or have gone through some of the things that I have because going through the issues that I have gone through um, really shows the way of the person that I am and I don't think that I've actually ever coexisted in 
someone's life without being touched, without liking being touched for that matter. And because of that, I ended up having to suffer through this long, insufferable life that literally I didn't know how to express emotions. And on the first date with my ex that we were almost together for two years, she asked me why I have issues with being touched by people. Because she said that every time that, you know, like she and I have touched, that it's almost as though I don't want to be touched by her. And I said, honestly, it's not that I don't want to be touched by you, but it's more or less that I don't like being touched in general. And, <clears throat> you know, I mean, you shouldn't have to say that to somebody that you're in a relationship with. Because if you have to say that to somebody that you're in a relationship with, your relationship is doomed. Um, and, again, every relationship that I've been in, it's been that way. And, you know, I mean, some of my relationships haven't lasted because of that. Uh, the last, that relationship didn't last because of other reasons, uh, which I'm not going to get into because that is a, you know, a, a matter between her and I. You know, it isn't a matter between other people. Um, you know, I mean, my family knows, like, three or four of my closest friends know. Um, but other than that, you know, I, that's not something that I'm going to publicly uh, <clears throat> post on any kind of social media or blare out on like YouTube or uh, TikTok or something like that because it's not, that's not all right in my mind. It, it shouldn't be said or done uh, because you know, I feel like that is me basically throwing her out there and being like, oh, well, you know, this is why our relationship failed. This is why our relationship didn't work. This is why, you know, I'm just making excuses as to why our relationship didn't work. I know why our relationship didn't work. It's because of reasons that I'm not disclosing at this moment in time but my biggest thing is that you know the relationships I had before her you know I was taken advantage of and whatnot but at the same time you know before her I was always taken advantage of and when I was with her I never once got taken advantage of I was never once lied to never once cheated on never once stolen from um, you know, I mean, she, if she did take any of my money, she paid me back uh, because she felt bad about taking money from me and whatnot. But for me, it was that matter of the issue of if you're with me, you know, I'm going to be the person that's going to provide for you. I'm going to be the person that supports you because this is the type of relationship that we're in and this is what I need to do for you. Not what I want to do, but what I need to do as this individual to you um, and I think my biggest issue was that when it came down to it all I, I trusted her 90% of the time the other 10% of the time it wasn't that I didn't trust her it was more or less of that I didn't trust myself because I don't trust myself in any capacity um, because sometimes you know I would lie to myself about certain things so that I could feel better about myself so that I could do better by myself and within that instance it was kind of the realization of who I am uh, to this day and when it came down to it all I was livid because every moment of every second of my life I constantly questioned my existence my worth my value to people um, <clears throat> if I would ever be able to touch another person in any kind of way. Um, but you know, that last relationship that was two and a half years, the most we ever did was either kiss each other on the cheeks, uh, kiss each other on the nose or just hug. And that was it. And that, was be that wasn't because of her, that was because of me. I told her that I couldn't handle, I could barely handle being kissed on the cheek, let alone hugged. And that's because literally when I'm being forced into a hug or not getting a choice to hug somebody, I literally right after, almost right after that, I end up having a panic attack. Or I like have a mental breakdown because I can't tolerate or handle being touched. I mean, I'm working on getting around that and getting past that and you know, it, it, it it's gotten better to a certain extent, but at the same time, it's still there and I still have those issues that I haven't been able to work around. You know, I mean, some people I've gone past it I've gone past the issue because you know I trust them with my life. And I think that's another thing is if I trust somebody enough, I'm not gonna have any reason to have a panic attack. I'm not gonna have any reason to have uh, a mental breakdown. 
And that is because I trust them enough and I trust them with my life and I have no reason not to trust them because they've given me no reason not to trust them. And again, you know, I mean, every relationship is different. But for me, you know, having that kind of issues growing up, I just really wasn't sure how to go about that in life. You know, I wasn't sure how to go about any of that in my life. And eventually, you know, I came to the realization that, you know, hey, maybe this just isn't working out for me. You know, maybe this, this isn't who I'm meant to be. Um, <clears throat> I've questioned my own life at times because, you know, I mean, having as many issues as I do, you know, it makes me question as to whether or not I have actual self-worth or self-value. Um, none of it has to do with the relationships that I've been, well, all except for one of the relationships that I was in have to do with why I am the way that I am for the most part. Uh, one relationship I was in, I was constantly cheated on. The other relationship I was in, uh, I was accused of things I never did. Um, a relationship in between those two relationships, um, they tried to control the relationship. Uh, they tried to control me and what I did and who I was. And for me, that wasn't all right. Because in my mindset, you know, if you're gonna try and control me and you're gonna try and control who I am, I can't see myself being with that person. And that's just who I am. You know, if somebody has a problem with that, fine, go ahead, tell me. But you're the reason that the relationship isn't gonna work, you know? And, you know, I mean, other people, you know, I mean, there was another relationship that was in, in between the first, in between the relationship that I was accused of cheating on and the relationship uh, that was controlling. And the relationship that that was in, I was body shamed every single day. Now, I, when I was like 14, 15-ish, uh, I was coming up on like 230 pounds, I think I was. Like two, 228, 229. And I think the most I ever weighed was like 247. So like just about 250 pounds. And you know, I mean, it only took another 50 pounds to be 300 pounds. But now I'm currently weighing at like 1.6. I'm somewhere, you know, I mean, I don't feel comfortable with sharing my current weight only because, you know, I feel my body weight shouldn't be important to you guys. But I'm currently in between 167 and 175. I'll just tell you that. Uh, and for once in my <laughs> almost 21 years of living, I finally feel good about myself. I finally feel good about my body and I finally feel like I've achieved something that I've been striving to do. You know, I feel like another thing that uh, <clears throat> is because of the not being touched thing is because I didn't feel comfortable with my own body. You know, I didn't feel comfortable with myself. And because of that, you know, I just have no reason to be touched. I don't like being touched. You know, if you know me on a personal level and you try to hug me, I'm probably gonna scream and freak out. And, you know, I mean, it's just who I am. Um, either that or while we're hugging, you know, I'm going to be, like, kind of super antsy and I'm going to want to pull away and I'm not going to want to, like, be, you know, I'm going to be like, get away from me. And I've done that with every hug that I've been in. And that's because I legitimately don't like being hugged. I hate being touched. It's a matter of the issue of who I am. And, you know, I mean, some people, they just can't accept that. You know, some people just can't accept who you are. And if you, they can't accept who you are, then I think you have to question as to whether or not that relationship is worth being in or not. Um, that's my take on this whole thing. Uh, that's my take on the whole synopsis of, you know, my life and my personal uh, problems and issues. Uh, you know, just feel free to leave a comment. You know, I, I enjoy answering questions. <laughs> Oddly enough, that's the one thing that I actually enjoy, answering questions. It's, it's the thrill of my day. If you have questions, literally ask them, and I will answer them probably when I, when I get the chance to, but I just love answering questions. I don't know why. Don't ask. Don't ask me questions that I don't know the answers to. If I love it, just don't question it. I just love it. Anyways, almost half hour. Enjoy. <laughs>